Iterating through the properties of an object is not super difficult using the for in loop. But what if that object has a child object? Or even deeper than that, more than one child object, a child with a child. What do you do then? In this tutorial, we will take a look at that problem. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. I hope you all are staying safe out there and make sure to click the bell button and subscribe so you'll be notified about new tutorials. Also check out discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you'd like to support this channel, there's a link for that as well. Now the for in loop is commonly used to iterate over the properties of an object and it works very well. But what happens when that object has a child object? Well, let's take a look first. Here I have an object, person. You can see the properties that it contains. There is a type property that has an object as its value. And then there's an address property that has an object as its value. And so there are two objects, two child objects within this main object. So we have, in a sense, an object tree here. Here we have a for in loop. The basic idea of this is to just loop through and display the property name and the property value. That's all we're doing. So let's take a look at what that gives us first. Just open up the console here. And as you can see, we get all of the properties that are on the top level. But any property that has an object, we don't get the properties inside of that. We can open up that object because of what Chrome does for us here. But in order to work with it programmatically, we wouldn't have access to those properties. And we see that in the case of type and address. So what do we do about that? Well, let's jump back and take a look. So one thing we need to check is to see if the value, this part right here, is an object. And if that's an object, well, then we need to do something different with it. Otherwise, we can continue to do the console log statement that we're doing here. So perhaps we could set something up like this. I'm just going to do is object, and I haven't created this function yet, but this will allow us to check to see if that value is an object. Okay, so if that is an object, then we want to do something different. We want to loop through those properties. Else, we can just do what we're already doing. Just move that up there. Now, one thing we could do inside of this part of the if statement, if it is an object, is just another for in loop. I'll just do val2 this time in. And this time, person, we grab the value. So we use the original object, and then we use the property, and we use the square brackets in order to grab the value from that property. And so now we're going to do a for in loop for that object. And basically, we can do the same type of thing here. We'll just log to the console. val2, and then person val. Now notice what we do here. We do two sets of square brackets in order to get the value that we're after. All right. So that's set up to work for us. That would allow us to go through each of these objects, the type object and the address object, and display their properties. But we first need a function that's going to return if this is an object. Now, testing to see if something is an object can be a little bit tricky in JavaScript because the null value returns a type of object. And so we have to take that into consideration. So I'm going to set up that function here. And we're going to accept a value that is passed in. And we want to return whether that value is an object or not. And so the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the value is equal to null. If so, I want to return false. Because in that case, it's not an object. If it's null, it's not an object. Now I do that first because 
The second part I'm going to check to see if the type of is object. And so I want to get rid of any null values before we check for that. So I'll do return type of val. And we'll check to see if that's equal to object, like that. So that should return true if it is an object. And then it will cycle through the rest of this. So let's go ahead and save that and see how that works for us. And there we go. We're now getting type 1, type 2. This is inside of the type object. And we're also getting the data that's inside of the address. Now, what if we have an object of an object? So I'm going to change this here. I'm going to turn the street into an object, the street property. And we'll have street 1 and street 2. Street 2 is going to have an apartment number, something like that. There, now we have child object here, which also has a child object right there. And so how are we going to deal with that? Well, does that mean we keep adding another if statement and then a for in loop? No, this is a perfect case for setting up a function that we can recursively call. So that anytime we encounter an object, it calls that the function calls itself again, goes to that object, and then continues on. So let's look at how we'd set that up. So we want a function. I'm going to call it obj props since we're iterating through the properties here. And that is going to accept an object. And then inside of that, we're going to put this stuff here. We're going to have to change some of it. Let me get it in first and then format it a bit. And right now, OBJ is the object we want to act on. So we're going to have to change person here. Because the way we're going to call this function is OBJ props. Whoops. And then we're going to send in that person object from up here. We're going to send that in to, so it'll iterate through that. And so that means we need to change this to OBJ. And let's see, I can just, using Sublime, I can just grab all those. Do OBJ like that. So we've got that changed. However, we need to set this up so anytime it encounters an object, it's going to call this function again. So right here, instead of doing a for in loop, we're going to remove that. And what we're going to do is obj props. We're going to call itself. And we're going to send it the new object. In this case, obj square brackets val. That's the new object. So basically, it's going to start first name, last name, email. It's going to go through all of those. And it's going to use this for in loop. It'll check to see if they're an object. They're not, so it'll just log to the console. However, once it encounters type, it is an object. So what happens to it? It calls this again. And so it calls it with this object. And so then it does type 1 and type 2, logs those to the console, and then continues on where it was at. When it encounters address, sees that's an object. So it jumps into it. The first thing is also an object. So it calls obj props again, takes care of those two, then takes care of these, and then it finishes out and unwinds. So what this does for us is allows us to use any object with any number of children and be able to display the properties. So let's see how this works. All right, we've got first name, email, type one, type two, active. We have the street one and street two. It got both of those. And then goes back out to city and then zip. And so that was able to go through all of those for us. 
So this is our final version. It uses this function to check to see if it's an object. And then it recalls it, then it calls itself recursively anytime it encounters a new object. So there's our final version. And it will work for multiple levels of child objects. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button. And remember to subscribe. Also, remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. And make sure to click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.